you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Before we get started, um, we get it. There's some bad lettuce out there. Everybody remain calm. <laughs> Sorry, Rev Jeff. <laughs> I had to do that. I saw that on, on Facebook. Um, Dr. Um, Edward Filyun uh, from Santa Rosa had posted that. He's always posting corny jokes like that. And I just I wanted you to laugh and feel in the spirit. So thank you for that introduction. Actually, um, I wrote something wrong on that. Um, actually, my grandfather, Jerry Arthur Twine, he founded um, Eastside Church of Religious Science. It's now known as LA Third. So that's down in Lamert Park, where Ricky Byers Beckwith was yesterday. So um, yeah, fourth generation. Yeah, so it's who I am to some degree. <laughs> to some degree, more so now than it has been in the past. So I, again, am Stacy Hilton, co-minister. This is my friend, Reverend Cheryl. She's also one of the co-ministers. And we have our other co-minister, um, Reverend Dan Jerome in Las Vegas. We have been, oh, ministering since 2016 as co-ministers. And it has been a journey, a journey. And I know you guys have gone through some stuff, so you know how that journey goes. And it's a journey of love. And I can absolutely feel that love lives here. So I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. So your theme for the month is living an intentional life or something like that. My talk title is Walking with Eyes Wide Open. Sub, oh, subtitle, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. <laughs> A little James Brown there. Sub, subtitle, play in your A game. Play your A game. Okay, so in our Declaration of Principles, what we believe, one of the tenets state, we believe the ultimate goal of life is to be a complete emancipation from all discord of every nature. And this goal is sure to be attained by all. Sure to be attained by all. So the first A I have for you is to acknowledge the presence. Acknowledge the presence. That was a beautiful prayer that you, that you did this morning. Thank you so much. Both the pray in and the prayer up here. That I can absolutely feel the spirit within, whether you call it God or infinite intelligence, um, energy, love, life. I have kind of a list. I want you to listen to see which one resonates with you. The high deliverer, the cause of wisdom, the beautiful, the highest, or origin, the innermost. First cause, absolute, the light, Jehovah, Emmanuel, the almighty giver, the healing name, the forgiving presence, able to do all things, the almighty giver, being beyond all knowing, beneficent presence, eternal eminence, author of peace, the unseen power, divine beauty everywhere, protective love, pure consciousness, Allah, the most glorious one, immeasurable power, I am that I am, the unbegotten, our Father Almighty, our Mother Almighty, Spirit Almighty, giver of wisdom, truth revealed, breath of heaven, waiting splendor, the Holy Mother, all powerful, everywhere present, the living light, wisdom, truth, beauty, life, light and so much more, so much more. I mean, doesn't that just feel yummy? Just feels yummy, yeah? You know, it is in all things. And I connect with it when I, I actually got this list from uh, Dr. Kathy Ann Lewis. She taught a class um, called High Mysticism, uh, which is by Emma, a book written by Emma Curtis Hopkins. Emma's a little, you know, she's a little tricky to understand. Uh, but she had, from this book, she came up with 99 names for God, which I just love that, because the more I can embrace it and embody it and connect with it, the better I am for it. So that's the acknowledgement part of it. Actually, God is not only love, but God is also law, right? We know this. So that cause and effect thing. And the law is impersonal. It says yes. It is... Oh, 
it is creative. And it is blind force. You've got to be very careful about what you put into that law because uh, you want to get out the best possible um, outcome. Blind force. So next, the next A is be awake. And I've heard this all morning, so funny. Um, be awake, alive, and alert, and aware at all times. I love Rev. Jeff's um, morning table, if that's what it's called, at 9 o'clock. And I knew I was on the right track because those words came up quite a few times when we sat and we talked about uh, what does walking, wise open, walking with eyes open mean to each person that was sitting there. There was about seven or eight of us. And quite a few of us said the same thing, being awake and alive and aware and got connection. You know, not sitting on your phone like Rev. Cheryl's doing right now. <laughs> She's checking in on Facebook. <laughs> I don't know what I do, what I do without Rev. Cheryl. I just like to give her a hard time. She's my bestie. I can do that. And she does the same back, so don't worry. But, you know, sometimes we sit and we watch, we watch the kids, you know, or sometimes we will get in that space where, you know, we're disconnecting. We think we're connected, but we're really disconnected, right? There's somebody sitting right in front of us that we don't even know that they're there, and we're not acknowledging who they are and the God in them, and so we don't have much of an experience. When I first became a, a senior minister, really my, my thought was that I would just be the minister of practitioners. We have about 26 people on our ministry of prayer team, and there were four of us practitioners um, until about my first year of ministry, and we had about 11 coming through. So. Somebody needed to herd the cat, so to speak, because you know how we're all individual, <laughs> individually minded presence. And I mean that in the most loving way, because I absolutely love the practitioners. They do a stellar job. But you know, we, we kind of have a, a thing as practitioners and ministers, we want to do our own thing, right? Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I've got my own mind, and it's the one mind, and it's good. But sometimes we kind of have to, you know, they need some, a little bit of reining in, and I myself do the same thing. Um, and so I said, well, Spirit, I, that's, that's my job. You know, Reverend Cheryl's the administrator. I'm going to uh, be the minister of practitioners, and that's good. I'm good with that, right? Um, I don't need to speak. And I'll pray every now and then, but there's no need for me to, you know, that, that's already, we've got that handled. And our dear Reverend Cynthia, who I'm, um, uh, I've been at her center for, I don't know, 10, 12, 16, 16 years, something like that, 16 years. Um, she made her transition the year that, uh, right after we got out of ministry. And um, she was sick a year before that. And so we had some ups and downs. I know you all know how that feels too. And without a minister and, you know, people filling in and, you know, um, people falling away because it was just, it was a chaotic time. You know, and that's, that stuff happens. And um, so I said, okay, well, I'll step up, and I'll do one Sunday. I said, but here's the condition, spirit. I'll do one Sunday a month, right? One Sunday a month. Find somebody for the other Sunday, and Reverend Dan will do, do the other two Sundays. And I'll, and I'll do a Wednesday night once a month. <laughs> and, so, and, and so, spirit, you know, we, had, we came to agreement about that. And um, I said, but here's the condition. You have got to make the message loud and clear for me. You have got to bring it to me. I mean, I don't want it, on, you know, emailed. I, you know, I'll take an email, but really right in front of me where I can have a connection so I can see it, so I can present it in the way that it should be presented. And so Spirit and I said, okay. And so that's what we've been doing. And it's going pretty well. <laughs> it's going pretty well. Um, yesterday, I was looking for inspiration, and, and you know, I'd had some outlines and some things that I thought that I wanted to say and wanted to address. And, um, and so, Reverend Cheryl was here visiting her niece. We came down for the, the weekend, well, for yesterday and today. And um, so, she dropped me off. My favorite pastime is wine. So, I went to a little wine bar. Um, and so, I figured I'd talk to, the, talk to the locals and get, get so, you know, a little fresh, freshen up my talk and get a little inspiration. And, and a little wine, you know, it's not a bad thing. That was, that was Jesus' first miracle, you know, turning water to wine. So, so we don't need to judge the wine thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> so 
Reverend Cheryl dropped me off in my car, um, and there's one person that's working there in the wine bar. So um, she was lovely. However, not a lot of, <laughs> she was working, so not a lot of conversation could, could go on between us. Um, so I said, well, okay, Spirit, well, let me go. I'll go have some lunch, and I'll come back. Went, and I'll figure I'll go meet some people. Went to a little barbecue place around the corner. There, I was the only one in that restaurant. Huh, Spirit, I guess, I, I guess I'm going to keep, keep moving through this. <laughs> Went back, and then there was more people there. There were more people there. And just some lovely locals that had lived here all their life. So funny, because I grew up in Southern California. I grew up um, near LAX, on Ladera Heights, and um, never been to Riverside. These people live in Riverside, never been outside of Riverside. It's amazing to me. Talking about walking with your eyes open, wide open. Right? Get out and go visit some spaces. I mean, it's lovely here. So talked to this young man, and he, is, um, he was excited. He had a dog named Emma, which was hilarious to me. Dog named Emma, who loved me, jumped up on my lap. And um, he starts telling me about his new job. And so he would be getting out of Riverside. He's going to be going to Big Bear as to be a snowboarding um, um, teacher. And just cute guy, sweet guy, maybe 30, in his early 30s. And he said, I didn't think I could do something like that. He said, but I, something just told me to look on Craigslist and, and see, you know, because I love it so much, if that might, if there was something there for me. Um, I don't want to leave Riverside because I love it here and I have a job here. But um, something just said to look. So he looked, the person, and he saw this job. And... They, he got a gig. He's a snowboarder, snowboarding teacher for three days a week. And sight unseen, they haven't met, he hadn't met the person that hired him or anything, and he'll be, he was going to leave today to go up there. And he just said, somebody just said to follow my passion. So he was obviously walking with his eyes wide open and being alert and available to what spirit had. So it was a lovely conversation, just lovely. So the third A is affirm the good. There's so much good out there. And in here, start in here and then go out there. If you start in here, you'll see more, right? Affirm the good. You know, I get caught up in the news sometimes, and it doesn't always look good, right? But you got to look a little further than right here, because what I can see right here, getting a little older now, so <laughs> you probably need glasses. <laughs> But you know, there's more good coming. It's, we're spiraling upward, not the other way around. So affirm the good. And when it's not good, pray for it. Be in alignment. Be in alignment. And what does that mean? That means be, being in integrity. Your thought, your word, your action should all be in sync. It's so much easier. I mean, it's just amazing how life flows when you are in sync with who you truly are. It doesn't matter who, what anybody else thinks you are. It matters what you think. Because your BS, your belief system, supports that. Right? That's that cause and effect thing. I know I'm wonderful. I know I'm blessed. I know I'm loved. And I have a belief system that tells me the same thing. Then, that's my, then I show up that way. And it's all so easy when I do it that way. I think the, some people will ask me, you know, well, you've been in re religious science your whole life. That must be such a blessing. And, and yes, I call it religious science, right? I've been in it 53 years. I should tell you I'm 75. It'll make you, oh, she looks great for 75. No. <laughs> 53 years. I was actually christened by, I guess they call it christened, back then they did, 1965, by Dr. Hornaday, um, who is known as the apostle of uh, science of mind. And I found that out by doing a little research. Uh, we did an event um, at the Springs Preserve, which is kind of like an arboretum in Las Vegas, without all the, wild, the wildlife, um, but just a beautiful space and peaceful. And they have a Day of the Dead event. Um, and so we built an altar. It was the first time doing something like this, and we wanted to be, have more exposure to 
other communities because we're, we got the same folks and we love them, but you know, we're a well-kept secret. We're trying to get out and expose who we are. And so we built a Day of the Dead altar in honor of Ernest Holmes. And you know, at, for, you know, Dr. Holmes wouldn't have liked that sort of stuff. He was not that, that type of um, gentleman that wanted to be you know, revered and, and all of that stuff. But it wasn't that kind of thing. It was really just his, um, all of the, some of his quotes, um, we had his saints as Dr. Hornaday and Thomas Chord and, and Emma Curtis Hopkins. And, and so we had little, um, we had candles with, with their pictures on them. Um, so it was really just an introduction to different people, uh, a, different, uh, a different group of people who would never probably otherwise be exposed. And people loved it. They absolutely loved it. Um, but in doing that, I was I started reading The Inner Light. I don't know how many of you have read that book. Um, it's an oldie but a goodie. And I got to, um, from Dr. Hornaday's perspective, get to know Ernest Holmes in a different, more informal kind of way, instead of the, you know, this very staunch kind of, even though he was a fun-loving guy, but you know, he was pretty serious about, about life. But he was very curious and would just walk up on, and if he saw a flower that was different that he'd never seen before, and, and just um, look at it and say, huh, look at what God has created, and was very curious about all things. And it's a great book. I don't know if, you, if it's still in print, even. Probably not. Um, but I'll get back to that in, in a little while. Um, but really, going back to the hardest thing about being in Science of Mind my whole life was when you get off track, and you should know better, right? Because I'm not Catholic, but I know people who are, and they talk about the shame. So imagine the shame in that, right? Because you know that you know, and you know that it's your responsibility, and you know that you've always had the power, and that's the only thing you've ever known, and you still allow yourself to go down that road. That's been the hardest thing. But I, I, was, I would say, the, I mean, obviously, the blessing is that I know who I am, I know that I'm loved, and I know that I'm loved. And once I got back on track, it's been just, um, just a wonderful place to be ever since then. It has just been absolutely magnificent. And I know that, OK, it's OK to be off track. And the time that I was off track, it gave me more compassion for those that find their way off on a whole different, you know, down the rabbit hole. And if, you know, and if there's anything that I can do to help them back, I'm certainly available to do that. Whereas before, um, you know, religious science can be a little bit cold. You know, this, this is this, and this is this, and this is this, and I was kind of that girl, right? So I, I do this, and I do this, and I'll get this. And there's not always, for me, there was not always that compassionate connection with other people. It was just more the science part of it and how to work my life. and. In, you know, you have the same ability, so I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> the last A that I have is staying in the awe. Another word that came up a couple of times, staying in the awe of it, which to mean finding the gratitude and the appreciation for all of it. Life is uh, it's mysterious. And yeah, we've kind of figured out and kind of worked it out in how we think, think it works. And there's still so much mystery, and we don't know how things are, how did it really happen? We don't know. We don't have to know the how, as we say in the teaching. So there's an awe and appreciation all the time. All the time. And when you're not seeing that or feeling that, you go back to acknowledgement. You go back to that place of, what God is, what spirit is, what love is. That God is spirit, God is truth, God is energy, God is divine love, God is light, God is wisdom, truth, and beauty. God is the healer, God is the revealer. God is love. God is each person in expression all the time. Each thing in expression. God is. I am. In this book called The Inner Light, um, it, like I said, it's an informal portrait of a philosopher. And um, 
somewhere in it, there's a uh, chapter, I think it's chapter 11, called The Recipe of Living, where Dr. Hornaday talks about my father, who was going to be here today, and then he wasn't able to come. He lives in L.A., like I said. And um, he said that Dr. Holmes carried him around at, at a conference and called him the most beautiful baby ever. So that's my dad's claim to fame. <laughs> he loves that story. And so I go back and I read this, and, you know, and um, it goes on about um, a cousin of mine, apparently, that I didn't know, and it talks a lot about um, her testimonial and, and what she did. And my, both my grandparents were practitioners, <clears throat> and it's kind of skipped a generation. <laughs> but there's another, the last chapter is called The Light, and it talks about this man that lived in Barstow. Um, I don't know what time frame, I'm thinking maybe the early 60s, um, and he lived by himself, and he was ill. He had a heart condition and lived on a ranch and lived in, like, someone's back house, I'm assuming. And this gentleman just saw no hope, and the doctors told him there was no hope. And, you know, back in those days, um, Dr. Hornaday would get people on the, okay, well, you fly here, you fly there, and you fly there, and, and we'll get you back on track. Well, this gentleman didn't have that kind of capability, um, to even call anybody to do that. Uh, but he heard Dr. Hornaday on the radio, who at the time was on KFI, <clears throat> and um, he said, I'm going to get to, I'm not a religious man, but this makes sense to me, and I'm gonna, if I can get there, if I make it there, because the doctors told him, you know, you have a couple, couple months at most, and you can't, you can't walk around, you can't run around, you shouldn't even leave, get out of your bed. It's that serious. He said, okay, I'm going to go see this Dr. Hornaday fellow, and if he can do something, then, you know, then I'll believe it. He wasn't religious at all, and um, didn't have much family, and didn't want to bother the family that he did have that lived across the country. So that's just kind of a setup to the story. Um, he actually made it to see Dr. Hornaday. When he got off the, he called Dr. Hornaday before he was going down, um, and he said, I'll be there. And he said, well, do you know when? You know, they didn't have cell phones back then. <laughs> so, you know, so he's like, okay, well, I'll just sit here and wait. So he left the bus that morning, got there. He said by the time he got there, he was healed. He ran off the bus, and he said, I just envisioned this gentleman just sitting by candles just praying for me, which was not Dr. Hornaday's style. And Dr. Hornaday said, I never prayed for you because you didn't tell me what was wrong with you. You healed yourself. You healed yourself. And so I just thought that was a fantastic story. I mean, we all have the ability. If we just will use those steps, you know, acknowledge, be awake, alive, and alert, affirm the good, and stay in the awe. And that's what this gentleman did on the bus. He did all of those things. He got to Dr. Hornaday. He ran off the bus, and he's like, okay, thank you so much. What can I do for you? He's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I haven't done one thing. And so this is kind of how the book ends, and it says a lot. I shouldn't probably tell you about a book that you can't buy, but. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest Holmes' philosophy, philosophy insisted and demonstration proved that we can know peace of mind health, abundance, and growth in spiritual understanding by turning with an already believing faith to the power within. The divine I am, the light that lighteth every man and woman who cometh into the world. A shining path awaits each of us, Erda said, and those who seek will find it. And so, if you stay on your A game, you'll always find it. You'll always find it. So thank you for being a wonderful community, for hanging in there when you didn't have a minister, and for just practicing love, because it certainly does live here. You are absolutely an, a blessing to science of mine. And so it is.